Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of CNM's Home Herbal Remedies. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the most effective immune boosting tea, the immunity. So coming up, a step-by-step -step guide to how we make our immune boosting tea. The choice of ingredients, why we've chosen these particular herbs, what their actions and effects in the body are, how to blend them and in what proportions. And then of course we're going to be showing you how to actually make the tea because it's very important that you follow these instructions to the letter to make this most effective immune boosting immunity. Now a change of season can often challenge our immunity. It can actually happen in the spring, it can happen in the high summer sometimes, or it can certainly happen at this time of year, which is as we move through autumn and into winter. So let's get started with the first step. So first of all, let's introduce our herbs. We're going to be making 100 grams of this tea, which is about enough for one person to have three cups a day for a week. We're gonna start with 25 grams of elderflower. We're gonna add 25 grams of elderberry, 15 grams of echinacea root, 10 grams of thyme herb, 10 grams of mullein herb, and 15 grams of yarrow. All of these herbs will boost your immunity in very specific ways, and actually any of them would be fine just on their own, but mixed together, they pack a powerful punch. So we're gonna start with elderflower. And the reason I've chosen elderflower, apart from the fact that it's a great immune boosting herb, is that it has a pleasant taste. And it always helps when you're blending teas to think about how it's gonna taste. Some herbs can have very strong tastes, and actually the stronger the taste, the more powerful the herb is likely to be. So you want something as a base for this, which is going to recommend itself to the palate. In terms of its medicinal action, elder is what we call a cooling diaphoretic, and that means that it helps you to sweat. So sometimes when your immune system is challenged, one of the best things you can do is to just start up that elimination process. And I've used elder time and time again uh, when catching a cold, for example, to get through that cold really super quick. And actually, we've got a couple of other ingredients in the mix there that will do the same thing as well. But this is a nice, fragrant basis for the tea that we're going to make. We're going to add elderberry. Now, obviously, elderflower has to be harvested in the spring, so uh, you're keeping herbs for later use, but also adding herbs in season as you go along as well. So we've got 25 grams, so we're just going to add those in to the mix, and we'll mix them all up once we've got everything in. Now, elderberry, of course, super full of vitamin C, has many of the properties that we'd expect from the flower as well. In particular, it helps us to deal with viruses. Now, you all know echinacea. You couldn't possibly do a powerful immune-boosting tea without some of this stuff. This is the root of the purple cone flower, echinacea, purpurea and in the CNM herbal medicine course for example you will learn that there are actually three varieties of echinacea used medicinally but this is probably the easiest to get the easiest to grow it'll grow quite well here in the UK it doesn't just boost the immune system it actually helps the immune system all the complex little pathways through the immune system to harmonize together to do what the body needs it to do in order to keep it protected. So as I say, we've got about 15 grams of echinacea root in here. That's going in the mix right now. And our next herb is thyme. Now thyme, in addition to being a highly aromatic herb, and aromatic principles in herbs are very stimulating to all sorts of different bodily functions, immunity being one of them, circulation actually is the other. But the reason for putting the thyme in here, apart from the fact that it's a great overall protector, is because this is gonna to go to the lower part of the digestive tract and help the lungs. So if there's anything stuck in the lungs, thyme will help to bring it up. And it's when we get that stuck mucus and catarrh that we're at most risk of developing an immune-related problem. And that was 10 grams of thyme. Our next herb is mullein. Mullein leaf and flower. Now this is a herb that is very protective to mucous membranes in particular. So we're talking largely about the mucous membranes of the upper respiratory tract. It's a great remedy for ear problems, for nasal problems, for all of those little passages around the ear, nose and throat region. This is a herb with a lot of mucilage in it. Mucilage is a sort of slippery, slimy, carbohydrate-like substance that's found in many plants that helps to protect and lubricate our skin and our internal tissues, the mucous membranes. So again, we have 10 grams of this. 
Now, our last herb is yarrow, 15 grams. Now, like elder, yarrow is also a diaphoretic. It helps you sweat. So in the event that you get a viral illness, it will help you sweat it out before it really takes hold. But it has a few other properties that are quite useful as well. It's a relaxant, so it helps the whole thing to go without too much stress. It's an astringent, so in the case of excessive discharges from the nose and the mucous membranes, it will help to tighten all of that up and make one feel a little bit more comfortable. It's also quite a relaxing herb to take, and this always help, helps if you're not feeling so good. So, all that remains is for us to blend these ingredients down. It's very important to get them mixed properly. So here we have this all blended up. Let's move on to step two. So the final step, of course, is to make our infusion. And here we have a special infusing teapot. And what we've got in there is a nice mesh that's going to hold the herbs. And of course, we're going to use more than we would if we were just making an ordinary nice cup of herbal tea. This has got to pack a medicinal punch for us. So we're going to make enough for about two people here to share two nicely heaped dessert spoons full of this mix. Into the pot it goes and then we've got some freshly boiled water here and we're going to just pop in enough for a couple of good mugs full. There we go, that should do nicely. And I'm just going to quickly tamp that down a little bit just to make sure it's all underwater. So to really get the medicinal benefit out of this mix, we're going to steep this for 10 to 15 minutes. And here we go, our immune boosting tea nicely brewed up here for 10 minutes. And all that remains is for me to pour myself a cup. And this is not only powerful, you can feel and taste it. It's actually very palatable as well. It tastes great. So there we go, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any future episodes. And I'll see you again on the next one.